Today in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the differences between useState and useReducer. To get us started, we have this database app over here, and it's made up of three different components. The first component is a component that lets us select different tables in our database, so I can select books, and then I can go back to users. The next component is this data component, it lets us see all of the data in the selected table, and also gives us the ability to remove rows from a table. And then finally down here, we have our admin component. It lets us restore the table to its defaults so we can get Alice back. And we also have the functionality to remove all the rows from a table. So over here is how our database is implemented. We start off with this initial data structure that stores our selected table, as well as all the data in our database. And then we pass that to the use state hook, uh, which is gonna give us back react state that we can then pass down to each of those child components. Now, every child component is also gonna get access to this set database function because they all need to modify the database in some way. In fact, if we look at the tables component, we can see that it calls set database and it changes that currently selected database to whatever table you happen to be clicking on. Now, this app is working fine today, but I think there's a potential problem with how we're giving all the child components direct access to this state setter. We're basically telling all the child components that they can modify the database in any way they see fit. And you can imagine that as we add more functionality to this app, you could have two child components overwriting data that maybe another one needs and kind of getting into a little fight with each other. And so we wanna to try to prevent those potential bugs. So we're gonna go ahead and use the use reducer hook. And this hook is gonna give us back two different things. Uh, the first is going to be our database. And the second is gonna be a function called dispatch that lets us modify the database. Now I'll get into why it's called dispatch in a bit, but for now we're gonna continue on with our reducer. So our reducer is going to start with an argument that describes how we want to modify the database whenever that dispatch function is called. And the way that argument works is it's gonna get a copy of the current database, and then we're going to make our modifications and return a new version of the database. In this case, my reducer is just gonna return the state it was given. And so right now, this is a way of saying that we're not going to be making any modifications just yet. Uh, the next argument to our reducer is going to be the initial value of the database. And so we'll use our initial DB variable. Okay, so now that we have a reducer where we can put database logic, uh, we're gonna go ahead and comment out our database state, and we're gonna start implementing this reducer. And the first component I wanna implement it for is this tables component. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of uh, data and admin. Now there's an error because uh, our tables component was expecting to get a set database function, but that no longer exists. So instead we are going to give it dispatch. Okay, back in our tables component, we no longer have set database, we only have dispatch. And so when this button is clicked, we need to dispatch something. So for now, we're just gonna call dispatch. Okay, so clicking a table in our app does nothing, and that's because our dispatch call is running a reducer that makes no changes to the database. So let's modify our reducer to just select a different table. So we're gonna take the current state of the database, and we are gonna make one modification to that, and that is we are gonna change selected. And we're gonna select books. Remember the selected value is where we store the currently selected table. Okay, so our database starts off on users, and then when we click books, our reducer runs, and we select the books table. Uh, but there's one problem here, and that is we can't select the users table because we've hard-coded that books value. And so to fix this, we need to give our reducer more information. So when we go to call dispatch, uh, we should also provide the table name that we wanna select. And then back in the reducer, uh, it can get the table as an argument. And then now, uh, no longer hard coding this to books, we can select the actual table that we're interested in. 
Okay, let's select users and we can select books. And so you can start to see here how our reducer is going to work. Uh, our reducer is going to handle all the internal state of our database and our child components are simply just going to dispatch the changes that they want made. Okay, let's go on and get our data component working. So uh, no more set database. We're going to use dispatch instead. And then if we open our data component, we're going to have it start to use dispatch. Now down here are the red X's that delete rows from the database. And since we no longer have access to set database, we are going to comment this out. And instead we're going to use dispatch. So we're going to remove data from our table. So we have to think about what we want to dispatch. Uh, and since we need both a table name and an ID of the item we want to delete, we're going to pass these two things to our dispatch function. Now, currently, our dispatch function only knows how to do one thing, and that is select a table. Uh, but here we need it to delete an item from a table. And in our tables component, we need it to select a new table. And so a way we can communicate what we want dispatch to do is by passing along an argument called type. And we're going to call this type select table. And then we're also going to give it the name of the table that we want to select. And then when we're deleting a row from a table, uh, we're just going to invent a new type. So we'll say type delete row. Uh, we're going to pass a table and then we're going to pass the ID. And this is stored in item.id. These are all the items we're looping over. And then finally in our reducer, uh, instead of getting this table as an argument, we're going to get an object that's going to have type table and ID. And then we can switch on the type. And so when our type is select table, we'll run our code for selecting a new table. But when the type is delete row, we can run the code for deleting a row from a table. Now, before we go ahead and implement delete row, we're just going to make that a no op by returning state. So right now, delete row isn't going to make any changes. But if we save all of our files, we can see that selecting a new table still works. But then when I select this red X to delete a new row, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and let's get started on delete row. And we can go copy our old logic here and kind of use that as a starting point. And before we start writing the logic for deleting a row, let's just get this block of code formatted. So when we delete a row, we want to take the current state of the database and we want to modify uh, the table that we're trying to delete a row from. So we're going to take all the current tables, but we're going to make a modification to the table we want to delete from. So this is going to be state.tables. We're going to delete from table. And then we have to decide which row to delete. That is going to be the row that is equal to the ID that we pass in. Okay, so now when I call delete row, you can see that Alice gets removed. Now this code over here is a little funky, but for today, you don't have to actually worry about what we're using to delete a row. The big takeaway for this is that previously, uh, to delete a row, you had to call this code, but now you just have to dispatch a message to our reducer with delete row and as long as you supply it with the, the data it needs to delete a row, the row is going to disappear. So this is pretty cool. We have uh, two of our components working correctly, and you can really see how our reducer is starting to really capture the business logic of our database. Uh, before we move on to our final component, I want to talk about this data up here that we're destructuring. In the world of reducers, this is often called the action variable. And so I'm just going to name it action, and then we're going to switch on action.type. Uh, and when we're selecting a table, we're going to select action.table. And then when we're deleting a table, uh, we are going to use action.table, action.table again, and action.id. So with a reducer, whenever someone refers to the term action, 
uh, you can just look at that as the data that's being passed into the reducer. It's going to contain both the type and the data needed to perform the action. Okay, let's get started with this last component, our admin component. No more set database. And we need to make sure it uses dispatch. And right here, this is the button for restoring a table. And you can see a problem with this button. Uh, it has a lot of knowledge about our database. Uh, it actually knows what the initial values for our users and our books table should be. You know, this type of data is the type of data that can only get out of sync with our app. So I'm going to be pretty happy to replace this with a dispatch. So let's go ahead and start writing that. So let's dispatch a type of restore table and let's also pass the table name that we want to restore and we get that from up here okay so now we need to add a restore table to our reducer and so what state modifications is this action going to make well we know uh, we need to set action.table to its initial value. And we can take advantage of this initial DB up here and grab its initial data. So down here, uh, what are we gonna reset it to? Well, we've got an answer. It's gonna be initial db.tables and we'll look up the action.table. Okay, so now when I click restore, we get Alice back. So this is pretty cool. Okay, back in our admin component, we have one more button to take care of, and that is this uh, clear table button. So let's go ahead and dispatch a type clear table, and then we'll also do the table that we wanna clear. Now, before we go and add this action to our reducer, I wanna show you what happens when I click clear table. I get an error that says um, cannot read properties of undefined and it's coming from our tables component, this line right here. And it's trying to read database.tables, which is now undefined and that causes our entire application to crash. And if we go look at our reducer, uh, you can see that we haven't yet defined the action for clearing a table. So we actually get down to this, uh, this default case in our switch statement, and that doesn't do anything. It just calls this break function. And so what's happening is our reducer is not returning anything. And a function that doesn't return anything is as good as a function that returns undefined. And so our reducer thinks our new database is undefined and that crashes our app. You know, this error message is not that helpful. And so a way that we can improve this is that whenever we end up in this default case, uh, we throw an error that warns the user. So we'll throw a new error and we'll say unknown action and we will use the action type that was passed in. So now when I clear the table, I get this error, unknown action, clear table. And so now I know that my reducer is missing this action and I need to define it. So let's do that next. We'll start with a state from our previous action. And now, instead of restoring the action.table to its initial value, since we want to clear the table, we can make the action table an empty array. So now when I call clear table, all our data gets deleted, but you know, that's not a problem for us because we've got a way to restore it. Okay, so it looks like our application is now working correctly. It uh, looks like our reducer is handling all the use cases that our child components need. And so at this point, I think it's worth talking about some of the differences between use state and use reducer. And really the first thing that stands out to me here is that our reducer hides all of its implementation details and holds all of its business logic. And so basically all the operations that we can perform on our database are going to live here inside of our reducer. And so if we compare that to what was happening before, we can see that every one of these child components uh, had their implementation details inside of the components. So the knowledge of our database was actually spread out across these uh, three different components. 
But now all that, uh, that application logic, that business logic for our database lives inside of the reducer. And so a benefit of this is our components no longer have the burden of what it means to operate on the database. They don't have to know how to restore a table. All they have to know is that they want a table restored. And so they can just dispatch restore table and the reducer is going to take care of all the heavy lifting. You know, a really nice thing about this is that if you think about our database getting features added to it over time, those features are probably going to affect all of these different actions. So if I change how rows are stored, I'm probably going to need to change the logic behind deleting a row. And so a really cool thing about the reducer is that the change is going to end up in this part of the app. And this means that I can make changes to the internals of my database, but this component never has to change because when it wants a row deleted, it can just ask for a row deleted. It doesn't actually care how the database is structured and how the data for that row uh, happens to be stored. Another difference between use state and use reducer is that when we were using state, we were passing set state into all of our child components, which really we were telling our child components that we trusted them enough to change the database in any way they saw fit. But now, since we're only giving them a dispatch function, they can really only dispatch one of four commands. And so our child components now have a very constrained access into our database. And constraining access is a good thing when we're dealing with complex data structures because it means less parts of our system actually have to know about the internals of that data structure. So I'm pretty happy with this refactor. We ended up with a reducer that holds all the business logic and only gives our components access to a few different commands to run on our database. Now, when you see reducers like this, you might be tempted to make everything in your application a reducer. After all, uh, every piece of your application needs to access and modify state in some way. But really, I think there's just a few telltale signs for when to use a reducer. The first being that you have a complex data structure. You know, sometimes this data structure is going to span multiple components, but generally just any complex data structure is enough to want to use a reducer. The next sign is you have multiple components with a deep knowledge of business logic. And so a reducer can help hide all that business logic and put it all in one place. I think this refactor here really shows the power of reducers. So I hope you are able to take something away from this and come up with a framework for when to use a reducer in your applications.